Hey and welcome! Today we will solve maximum subarray interview question, so let's get into it. Here is the first example. We have an array like this and we need to find a subarray, a sequence, just part of this array, that has the biggest sum among all. So the answer is this part of the array, which sums up the number 6 and we return it as answer. Same for second example, but this is a hint, meaning even given a single element within an array, its sum is the same as itself and we should return it. And last example, another hint, seems like sum of each part of the array could not defeat the sum of all because remember that we might return the maximum sub array but the entire array by itself has the max of 23 which we might return it let's see how we are going to solve this problem as usual of course there's a brute force way for solving this problem but we are not interested in that and if we think a bit more about this this really fits well with dynamic programming criteria. i mean it asks for maximum of a sub array within the given array and all of a sudden if we get an array with I don't know hundreds of thousands of entries plus if we consider that this sub array would have start at any index what would happen next the possibilities could skyrocket right so here comes the dynamic programming to survive us you may interested how let's take a solid example to explain it here we have the first example initially we might have a variable that sums up values as we go far in our iteration let's call it current sum and as we iterate through the array at any point if the sum value goes below zero or by some result it becomes a negative value that would mean those values so far were a total waste of time we need to ignore them and restart the process why because like in this case it is so possible that if we have any positive values in an array, they will try to bring the total sum down. So wait, but now let's take a little detour here. Here comes two scenarios. First one is, what if we only have negative numbers in array? What will happen then? The outcome might be only minus one here. Why? Remember that we want max sum and putting any negative value in current sum would result in shooting ourselves in our feet. So a big no for that. And again, we might restart the process of summing when a negative value drags the total sum to below zero. And the other scenario is, what if we have a case like this? So this is super important because it will lead us to our main decision about should we keep a number into subarray sum or not, regardless of that number being negative, like these ones here. The answer for that question is, it depends. Let's go through it here. Again, we will ignore this here because it is negative and will make our current sum a negative number immediately. Next, this 2000 will make our current sum a positive number now, if a number does not bring the total sum to a negative value, that will be your friend, even if it's a negative number. And this process will continue until the end of array iteration. At the end, we already have the max sum that we are looking for, because we already kept track of it during our iteration. Meanwhile, the subarray continued to grow, so we can return the sum at the end easily. But if we go back to where we left off from first example, just for the sake of completing it, here, since minus 3 made our current sum negative, then we will move to the next index and restart the process. And this process will continue until, again, we hit another value that makes our current sum a negative number, but I'll stop the iteration here because it will not happen. But something interesting will occur at this index. From beginning of this subarray to here, we will have the max value that we are looking for. From now on, it's just a decrease. I mean, we will have current sum as 6, and if we subtract negative 5 from it, we will have 1, which is not max. And also, if we had 4 to it one more time, it will give us 5, which is not as big as what we found previously. So we have our answer as 6, and this process is known as Kadan's algorithm. You can find more about it in the description. There's a link about it there. But with that being clarified, let's jump into the code to implement the solution. Here we are in lead code. We need to initialize two variables to keep track of two things, the current subarray sum and the maximum subarray sum. Both of them will be assigned to first element of the array because if we only have negative values in an array, the one of the edge cases that I show you earlier, the max value for any subarray of that will be forcefully overridden by zero if we decide to go with zero in here initially. I'll hint you to something in a sec. Now it's time to iterate over nums array and this iteration will start from index 1 because of the manually assigned first index to above variables. So within this iteration, we will definitely update the created variables. For current subarray sum, we will pick the biggest between the current element in iteration and the sum of everything we have so far. Because remember, if a value brings the total sum to a negative result, we might restart the process of summing. For max subarray sum, we will pick the biggest between whatever we have stored as previous finding of ORs on max subarray sum and the fresh out of the oven current subarray sum because that is the latest sum of the subarray since the position of latest element that did not make our subarray sum a negative value. At the end, after we finish the iteration, we might return the max subarray sum as of our final result. Now, if I run this, 
Test cases are passing, and if I submit, we are in a good shape here. Now let's jump into the slides for time and space complexity analysis. So the time complexity will be O of n because we just iterated the array elements to the end of it. And the space complexity will be O of 1 constant because all we did was just kept track of current sum and max sum values. So that was it for this video. Thanks for watching and please leave a like, comment and subscribe to the channel. I will put a few more links about different playlists in the description for you to check it out. And finally, hope you enjoyed this video and stay tuned for the next one.